Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for December the 27th. My name's Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these daily market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. Having that out of the way, let's get this on. Hope everybody had a great weekend, Christmas and Hanukkah, uh, but the end of the year is just around the corner. So this, although we don't have a whole lot of economic data this week, we could see a lot of volatility, a lot of movement in the market uh, ahead of the end of the year. A lot of portfolio managers are gonna wanna lock in some losses and some gains. So we could see some really wild movements in there and without the economic data and probably a few less people involved in the markets because Christmas falling on uh, one weekend, New Year's on the next weekend, we could see a lot of people have, having taken this week off. So uh, a lot of retail traders may not be in there and the money managers could be trying to move the markets in their direction. So uh, that could see a lot of volatility. We usually see around this time of year, it's something called the January effect. And what that is, is what I just talked about, the money managers moving money around, taking profit and losses. That usually brings the overall market down uh, in December. And then in January, we see a pickup in volatility and in volume and with all of that, it's usually an upward push in the markets because they start investing their portfolio for the year. So um, that's what we normally see. I don't know. Uh, I thought that we'd see a down market this week and then going into January, start seeing the markets start to trend at least a little bit higher. Uh, but today, having said that, we are seeing a big up move in uh, like the NASDAQ and E-mini S&Ps, as well as crude. Crude oil up almost a dollar on the day, testing that uh, $54 a barrel area. Not a whole lot of economic data. Thursday, we do get out data on crude oil. Today, all we really got was the manufacturing index for the Richmond area, and it came in at 8 versus we also saw CB consumer confidence come in a lot higher than expected at 113.7 was expected to be 109 or 108.9, I should say. So not economic data that really would generally move the markets, but it's more on really what the retailers saw. We saw Google saying that they had a record Christmas season. So that could be moving the markets as well. So we're gonna see a lot of people talking about the retailers today, although they are not doing that great. So it could be that the brick and mortar stores are not gonna do that great, and the cyber stores are going to do better, just going off of what Amazon said. Then on the crude, or gold futures, gold futures up $4 on the day, but as you can see, they were up quite a bit earlier today. They were up about uh, almost 20 for the most part, it was looking like for a while there. But when the equities started rallying out of the gates from the open market session, not necessarily the overnight, but the open market session, we saw a blast off to the upside. Uh, the gold futures started suffering from that. Then on to the bonds, bonds down on the day, almost a point as we speak. Again, same idea. Bonds were treading water above that nine day moving average I've been talking so much about. But as the equities started rallying, bonds just fell out of bed for the most part, went back below that nine day moving average and continuing to make it look very bearish for the bonds. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 22 points, uh, 11 or 0.11%, I should, uh, should say. It is one of the laggers to the upside. The NASDAQ was up uh, probably double that earlier. Uh, this is the NASDAQ forward slash NQ up 38 points on the day. Went up and tested that 5,000 psychological mark I've been speaking about so much. 
came up just shy of that by about five points. Uh, again, I'm still under the mantra, this is going to wait. The 20,000 in the Dow, the NASDAQ into 5,000 is going to wait uh, at least until next year. I'm going to see it. I, I see it continuing to come off a little bit, despite the fact that we're seeing this big movement today. And uh, if we look down here at the bottom here, we can see that the volumes are just really getting thin. Uh, his, not historical lows, but this is what we should see during this end of the season or end of the year type of volume where it really starts waning. And as you can see, you know, the last few days is well below the average for the most part for these types of markets. And given that, it gives, a, if there aren't the players in there, you're going to see a lot more movements because they start hitting vacuums on the way up and down. This is the E-mini S&Ps, uh, up five points on the day, but as you can see in percentage terms, not quite as much as the NASDAQ and hasn't created a 52-week or historical high today where the NASDAQ was just coming shy of that 5,000 historical monumental, if you will, uh, pricing. This is the breakdown of the E-mini S&Ps on a 15-minute chart. This is what I was talking about. As soon as the markets opened, we really just saw straight buying to the upside, seeing a little bit of long coverings going on as we speak. Uh, these guys, you know, the big money usually has a tendency to get in early in the day and or late in the day. That's what we're going to typically see from low volume type of rallies where it just there's no resistance to the upside in these types of markets. And now we're starting to see some of these guys take some profits and come off a little bit. The mini S&P up six points right now. I know a few trades that I've done. This is the trade that I talked about in the webinar on Friday and talked about the put calendar. The retailers have not been doing very well. You don't expect Macy's to come out shining as the overall broader markets seem to have gone to the cyber side and not necessarily the brick and mortars. They've been in a downtrend. We're also just now starting to see this cross, which is a pretty big deal when the 50 day moving average crosses below the 200 day moving average. That really is an indication of a bear trend and we're seeing that happen again. So that up move to the upside brought it up. Now we're starting to see a crossover. We are below the nine day moving average, giving me more bearishness to this market. It also will want to migrate towards this volume profile area node, which is for the amount of time that has been spent. So it's very comfortable at that area. You could easily see it go down there, kind of hang out for a little while, and then maybe continue to the downside to test this value area low. That's what I'm looking for from this trade. And that's why it worked out so well. We also saw an anomaly with this where we have higher implied volatility in this front month than we do in the back month, which is the perfect scenario for this. You don't generally see it, but this fit the book just perfectly for that kind of situation because the one we're selling, we want to collect the most premium for, and that's the one that's going to have the volatility volatility embedded in it. The one we're buying would be great if we paid less for volatility there because the premium is going to be much lower in respect to that volatility. So we're going to pay for more for time in the back, but that volatility, if it comes out in that front one, we can see our profits come along rather quickly. So with the Macy's trade, decided to go into a put calendar and did the Jan Fab 36 put calendar. Now, in that, we're selling the Jan 36 puts and then using that to help finance some of those February 36 puts. You pay a debit for it so we know what our limited risk is, and I paid 44 cents for that. Um, I'm looking to try and get about 30% increase in that, which would put me at about 60 cents or so. Uh, that's closer to a 50% increase, but I'm looking to take it around. 60 cents on this one because I paid so little for it. But the upside potential on this is pretty good, especially if the market continues down. Uh, I can stand to make my profit rather quickly. If we see volatility come in a little bit, then I can uh, even see that happen 
more rapidly. So that's what I'm looking for for this trade. The only other thing I'm really concerned about is this Lululemon. As we talked about, I have a short Lululemon position in the stock, and then I sold some puts against it. Looking at 64.50 is where I'm short those socks. So as long as Lulu stays below $64.50, I'm gonna hold on to that trade for a little bit longer. But uh, if it starts going up and looking like it's gonna settle above that line in the sand, I'm gonna to look to cover that. So we've been pretty dicey back and forth on that level. I'm gonna be touch and go on that as we go on today and for the rest of the week for the matter. Um, so keeping my eye still closely on that. It's going to have a very short leash. That's all I got for you guys today. Friday's webinar, uh, you guys all said that you wanted to look at covered calls. This is great for when the market's at historical highs, like we're seeing right now. If you've been in this for this bull run, then you might be looking to lower that cost basis on what you paid for that. This is the perfect scenario for that. The market comes up and gets called away from us, then we look for a pullback to re-enter on those. But if the market kind of just slowly trickles higher, we'll be able to collect that premium on those short calls and lower our basis of what we originally paid for that strategy. So this is going to be the perfect scenario for this type of situation. We're not going to be as concerned about high implied volatility for these strategies, but we are going to be looking to lower our basis and increase our overall profit margin and yield on those stocks that we own in a portfolio. So it'll be great for an IRA or a margin account. And the other thing is, is if you are looking to take advantage of this upward momentum in the market and you've just started putting on stocks, which a lot of retail traders are doing right now, it will be a time to try and sell some of those calls against that to initially lower our basis. So it's not like you're buying at all time highs, which everybody's concerned about. We'll be able to lower what we paid for that and over time really uh, in some regards been able to lower those premiums that we paid for that stock to zero. So you basically have those stocks on for free. All right, so I'll show you how to set all that up on Friday. Go to protraderstrategies.com and if you can't take that, take it easy.